Now, we'll talk about object-oriented programming. Object-oriented programming concepts are the fundamental principles which will help you write better, more organized, reusable, and maintainable code. There are four pillars of OOP. Encapsulation, inheritance, polymorphism, and abstraction. Let's talk about encapsulation. Encapsulation is the concept of bundling data and the methods that operate on that data within a single unit or object, while restricting direct access to some of an object's components. Think of it as a protective wrapper that keeps the data and code safe from outside interference. Like here, we have class named back account. Inside it, we have a private field which we don't want to be accessed directly from outside this class due to security reasons. Then I created a property which returns the balance in get method. However, we again made set method private to restrict its access. Then I created a deposit method. It takes decimal type parameter. Inside it, I used if statement to prevent negative amount to be submitted. Inside it, I simply added the amount in balance. Next, I created a boolean type withdraw method. It also takes decimal type parameter. Inside it, I used if statement to check that amount to withdraw should not greater than balance and also should not be negative value. Inside it, I deducted the amount from balance and returned true to show successful transaction. Outside if statement, I returned the false to show rejected transaction. This way, I prevented the direct access to balance from outside of the class completely. Users can only access it in controlled manner by using deposit and withdraw methods. This whole method of encapsulation of the data is called encapsulation. Now, let's talk about inheritance. Inheritance is a mechanism that allows us to create new classes based on existing classes. It enables code reuse and establishes a relationship between parent and child classes. Like here, we have vehicle class. Inside it, I created three properties. Then, I created a parameterized constructor of this class and initialized all three properties inside it. Then I created a virtual method to display all these properties. I made this method virtual, so I could override this method in child classes. We'll see it in a few moments. Then I created a car class which inherits from vehicle class. We use colon to define inheritance. Inside it, I created a property for this class. Then, I created parameterized constructor of this class. In the constructor, I required four parameters. Brand, model, year, and doors. Then I used colon and use base keyword and passed three of these four parameters to it. And inside it, I initialized property with doors parameter. Now, pay attention here. I required four parameters here because base class also require three parameters because we required these in constructor of base class. So, I had to provide these to base class. To implement that, I used base keyword. Base keyword is used to send data to base class. Here, I provided these three parameters to it. So, its requirement is fulfilled. Then I initialized the property of this class inside the constructor, so, it's also complete. Then I created a method with the same name as we created in base class. But here, I used override keyword because I want to override that method. When a method is marked with override in a derived class, it replaces the base class's version of that method with the new implementation in the derived class. This allows derived classes to change or extend the behavior of the base class method. Inside this method, I'm calling display info method from base class using base.displayInfo. In base class, we are printing the properties in display info method. After that, I'm printing the property of this class here. Then I created the object of car class and also passed arguments to the constructor. Then I called this display info method of this class using this object. Now run this program. Here, you can see that brand model and year is printed from the base class and the number of doors line printed from the car class. This is how inheritance is implemented. You can inherit multiple classes from the vehicle class like this. Now, let's talk about polymorphism. Polymorphism is a concept that allows objects of different classes to be treated as instances of the same base class. It enables a single interface or class to represent different underlying forms. It comes in two forms, compile time which is method overloading and runtime which is method overriding. Let's see method overloading first. 
In method overloading, multiple methods in the same class have the same name but different parameter lists. The compiler determines which method to call based on number and type of parameters. Like here, I have a class named Math Operations. Inside it, I have three methods with same name. However, each method has either different parameter types or return type. Like first method takes two parameters, second method takes three parameters, third method takes two parameters but it takes double type parameters and return double type value. Then I created object of this class. After that, I called this add method three times. To first method, I passed two integer type arguments. To second, I passed three integer type arguments. And to third, I pass two double type arguments. After running it, compiler will automatically call the corresponding method according to parameter types and parameter numbers. Now run the program. Here, we can see the correct output, which mean each method was called correctly by compiler automatically. Now, let's see method overriding. In method overriding, a derived class provides a specific implementation for a method already defined in its base class. The overridden method in the derived class replaces the base class's method at runtime when called through a base class reference. Like here, I created this animal class. Inside it, I created a virtual method named speak. Inside it, I'm simply printing a message. After it, I created a class named cat which inherit from animal class. Inside it, I create a method named speak with override keyword. Inside it, I'm printing a message. Due to override keyword, this method will implement its own code on runtime. Then I created another class named dog which inherits from animal class. Inside it, I created speak method again with override keyword. Inside it, I'm printing a message again. Now, make object of all these classes. Then I called speak method from every class using object of that class. Now run the program. Here you can see that output of each method is different because each method has different code to implement. Important thing to note here. In method overloading, the method to call is determined by the compiler based on the method signature. And in method overriding, the method to call is determined at runtime based on the actual object type, enabling dynamic behavior. Now, let's talk about abstraction. Abstraction is the concept of hiding complex implementation details and showing only the essential features of an object. Abstraction allows you to define classes, methods, and properties that focus on what an object does rather than how it does it, providing a simplified interface for interacting with complex systems. In C Sharp, abstraction is achieved through abstract classes and interfaces. Abstract class is a class that cannot be instantiated on its own and often contains abstract methods that must be implemented by derived classes. Interface is a class that defines a contract that classes must follow, specifying method and property signatures without any implementation. Let's see abstract classes first. An abstract class can contain abstract methods without implementation and concrete methods with implementation. Derived classes must implement the abstract methods. Like here, I created a shape class. Inside it, I created a calculate area method with no code implementation and used abstract keyword to make it abstract method. Then, I created a display method with code implementation. Inside it, I displayed a message. Then, I created a class named circle which inherits from shape class. Inside it, I created a radius property. Then I created a parameterized constructor and initialized the radius property inside it. Here, we can see the red line which indicates the error. It is showing because we need to implement the calculate area method of base class. Then I created overridden calculate area method. Inside it, I implemented the code to calculate area. Then I created another class named square. Inside it, I created side named property and initialized it inside the parameterized constructor. Now, I have to implement calculate area method. So, I created this overridden method and implemented the code to calculate the area inside it. Then, I created objects of circle and square classes and also provided the values to constructors. Then I called the display method of the base class through these objects because both base and child classes are now related and I can call method of base class through child class. Then I called the calculate area method using these objects. Here, I'm calling same method but with different class object. 
Now run the program. Here we can see that message from display is printed twice and values from calculate area is also printed. Now let's see interfaces. An interface defines a contract that implementing classes must follow, ensuring they provide specific methods or properties. Interfaces provide even higher levels of abstraction because they do not contain any implementation. Difference between interface and previously explained abstract class is that an interface has no implemented methods inside it. All methods are defined to be implemented in child class. Like here, I have class named iMove. It's a convention to start interface name with an I. Inside it, I defined method move. Then I created two classes named car and robot. Both of these classes inherit from iMove interface class. Inside these classes, I implemented the move method. Now, there's no need to put override keyword. Then, I printed two messages inside these methods. Then I created objects of these two classes and called this move method through these. Now run the program. Here we can see that messages from both move methods are printed. This is how we implement abstract classes and interfaces. Purpose of these is to hide the complex implementation and exposing only essential details. That's all for this section.